Hey everybody, this is Scott Tutwiler, and welcome back to day two of our Capture One Portrait Retouching Tutorial Series. Where we're going to deep dive into several techniques to retouch a portrait completely inside of Capture One without going to Photoshop. And we're going to start with this image, and we're eventually going to end with this image. And there's quite a few steps involved, and there's a lot of different techniques to learn. And we're doing it step by step through different days because a lot of these are not really, I'd say, uh, the ways the tools are intended to be used or the techniques are somewhat creative. Uh, day one was pretty easy because we're just using the clone stamp and the healing brushes, you know, right out of the uh, right out of the gate, and that's pretty simple. But we're gonna get into some weirder stuff today. Today we're going to start working on dodging and burning. Before you jump to conclusions about dodging and burning, um, there's three different types of dodging and burning that I tend to kind of recognize or group my work into. The first one would be a corrective dodge and burn, which is what we're going to do today. And there's solving skin issues using uh, lightning and darkening. And we can do this much more powerfully than we can inside of Photoshop, uh, inside of RAW, because the image data right from the sensor is still at our fingertips and we haven't had to render that out to Photoshop yet. So we're going to be doing this series in order and the order is important. So the first thing we want to do is obviously handle all of the healing and cloning, which we've done already. And that shouldn't take you too long. I mean, I kind of went a little bit ham on this image because I'm trying to not do work in Photoshop. After we do dodge and burn today, we're going to have another day of creative dodging and burning where we do some different things to add a little bit of zing to the image. Uh, then we're going to be working on adding a sheen to the skin. We have color corrections to handle. Then we're going to work on uh, adding some punch to different parts of the image. Finally, we do color grading. So there's a lot of different steps, and each one may introduce you to a new tool or technique. Uh, so buckle up and follow along. Now, this image of Carly is available uh, for a couple bucks um, at a link down below. If you want to use your own image, that's great. But this is a RAW from my camera, and if you want to follow along on the exact same image, that's great. And Carly is pregnant with twins, and some of that money is going to her. So I think she would greatly appreciate that. As I say, it's two bucks. Uh, that's uh, not a lot of money. And I'm hoping that uh, some more people take me up on that offer because I thought retouching the same image together is a really great way to learn the tool without you just watching this video and not following along. So let's use some of that kinesthetic memory and actually do it. So without further ado, let's get rolling. So the first thing we're going to do here is this is where I am starting with my current version. I have gone through and added some healing to the image like we talked about last time. Uh, so if we look at my healing and cloning layers, this is where I started, and this is where I am now. So you see there's not a huge amount of difference, but I did go through and remove some of the more obvious blemishes, but I didn't take more than, say, five or ten minutes to do that. So today we're going to talk about corrective dodge and burn. Now, dodging and burning can be used without using any healing tools at all. In fact, if you hire a professional high-end retoucher, they're going to use these techniques, but they're going to do it in Photoshop. They're not going to do it in Capture One. But because Capture One has layers and Capture One allows us to use the pen, uh, we can actually get away with using some of those techniques right inside of our raw converter. So to get started on that, we're going to create two new layers. And we're going to create one, and both these are going to be uh, filled layers initially, uh, just so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so this is going to be our dodge, uh, which means to lighten. Now for the adjustment on this, we're not going to use the curve like you would inside of Photoshop doing this because we don't want curved data here. We want flat data. Uh, so what I mean by that is we can simply go and raise or lower the exposure. That's the great thing about working in RAW. So I'm going to add one full stop to this. And if I check my exposure warning, you see that everything is still in gamut. Nothing is showing a warning. Uh, so I'm going to keep that as my lighten. Now I'm going to invert the layer mask so that uh, we don't see that. Now, when I'm drawing later, when I'm using my brush tool, for example, I'm going to be setting my, my flow very low and my opacity to 100%. Now, the reason we do it this way and not using opacity is because we don't want to lift our brush a lot. So as we start sketching, for example, I just want to continue to draw, not have to lift my pen. So I'm just holding my pen down the whole time and going over this area. And you see that I've raised the exposure on that mask. So if you hold on uh, M, you can see the mask, or if you do Alt M, you can see the black and white mask that we've made so far. Uh, obviously, this is not what we're going to be doing, uh, so I'm just going to get rid of that, but it's all one movement. So use flow, don't use opacity. It's just going to make your life a lot easier here. 
Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do with a darkened curve. So again, I'm going to a new field adjustment layer so you can see it. And in this case, I'm going to subtract a stop. And again, I'm going to invert the mask because I don't want to see it right now. And the reason I did this mask fill and then invert it is so you can see the effect it's doing. Not You can obviously save yourself that step. And this is burn or darken. And I like to put this underneath lighten. I just prefer lighten on top. Note in Capture One, the layer order really doesn't matter because it's interpreting all of them kind of at the same time. Uh, the simultaneous layer thing is a little bit weird compared to Photoshop, and it takes a little of getting used. Okay, so now we would simply darken and lighten different areas of the image to help smooth it out. The trouble is, what do we lighten and darken? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer to help us see. And uh, we're just going to just make one here, and we're going to destroy this layer later, so I'm not really worried about it. And the goal here is to make it as obnoxious as I want to. Now I have to fill this layer so I can actually see what I'm doing. But my goal is to make this make her skin as blotchy as possible. So that I'm trying to see all of the areas where her skin would need to be brightened or darkened. So we're going to really torque on it here. You see here how this area is a little bit darker? That's the exact kind of thing that we want to get rid of. So we want to try and brighten that patch. The same with this one here and a few of the other areas on this image that you may see. Now to do that, we're simply going to use again these layers. Now I find it difficult to look at this in color, even though this is pretty desaturated. I'm just gonna to go to the background layer real quick, down to black and white, and I'm gonna check this box. And I'm gonna make sure these are all flat. I don't wanna do any adjustment. I just wanna see the black and white version. So I'm gonna to go to my lighten layer here. I'm gonna grab my brush, and I'm using a Wacom Medium tablet here. Uh, you could do it with, with a mouse if you'd like, but it's going to be work. Uh, but you want to make sure that your flow is down to like one or two and your opacity is 100. I use the airbrush here and I don't use pen pressure. Um, I just don't prefer it that way. And so I'm just going to go over this area a little bit to brighten it just so that it doesn't attract my eye anymore. And you're going to go through the entire image like this. Now we're not looking to remove individual freckles. And I will tell you that if you zoom in on this image, you're going to make yourself a little dizzy with the amount of work you can do. I'll tell you to do this from a distance. Uh, the closer in you are going to be, the better, well, I'll say the more refined the image will look, uh, but that can also look a little overdone. So this technique is very strong in the end. And what we're looking at now is very high contrast, and it may be hard to judge that this is actually gonna look good when we're done, but I think you're gonna be mind blown when you see the before and after here. So I'm just looking to brighten some of the areas that look a little dark compared to their neighbors. So trying to add some sort of a, a homogenous look to it. Now I see this area here is a little brighter. So I'm gonna go and grab my darken and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm going to try and bring this down just a little bit so that it matches its neighbors. And I'm not trying to make this on a global scale so that everything is gray. What I'm just removing is the more blatant areas. And uh, there's not a lot to this. I mean, you, it's more or less just a matter of seeing and getting used to seeing the areas that you need to remove. Okay, that's good enough here. Now I'm going to go to my adjustment layer and I'm gonna scoot it a little bit so that I can see more areas of the face. And again, I'm going to increase that contrast. So I'm gonna be moving my curve over as I work my way across the image. You can see some areas down in here as well. So remember that if you've got skin in the image, even if it's not in the face, you, your job is still to retouch it. Don't forget, you know, hands and things like that. So you go through and just kind of brighten these areas a bit. Again, the adjustment we're doing is very minor, but we're doing it under such a microscope that when we're done, we're gonna get a pretty dramatic change. So anything you wanna do, this is the perfect opportunity to lighten areas under the eyes, if that's something that bothers you. But remember the eye is an orb in a socket. So uh, don't remove that because uh, people without you know, round eyes look a little weird. Now she has amazingly large eyes and I just think they're awesome. So um, she's fun to shoot just because her eyes are so huge. And again, don't zoom in too close because you'll get sucked into this and then six hours later you'll come up for air. So we're gonna go back to our adjustment layer. Again, we're gonna give it another nudge across. And again, we're just trying to create as high of a contrast of a situation for ourselves as we can. And it's okay if we you know, push out part of the image, but you see down in here, for example, I have some other areas that I kind of want to brighten a little bit. Thanks Monty for, by the way, for pointing out this really great tool for helping me 
draw on my images as I'm doing uh, this presentation. Uh, so we were doing a, a, a little meeting on the Discord there. So if you're not familiar with it, I have a Discord server up now. So if you'd like to chat with others, chat with me about Capture One, Photoshop, um, Blender, and uh, any of the other things that I happen to do, uh, that's a great place to do it. Uh, also, if you are a uh, channel member, uh, there's a texture available for you this month. And I put the code for that in uh, not only here on YouTube, but I also put it uh, in the Discord chat. So if you happen to be on there, you can grab it from there as well. So when I mentioned last time that a pimple is something you could or, or uh, may choose not to remove using the healing tool, this is the way you would remove it. You would simply find the brightest part of the pimple and darken it, find the darkest part of the pimple and lighten it, and you would then remove the red and you'd be able to get rid of that pimple because it is not really a three-dimensional thing, obviously. It is a two-dimensional uh, now that we're looking at it on, uh, on our screen. So we are almost done here, by the way. This is a pretty quick technique. Um, we can see some areas here on the lip that we need to fix. So again, I'm gonna to go to Lighten, Brush Tool, and I'm using my bracket keys to adjust the size of the brush. I'm just gonna brighten that area there a little bit, uh, just so to make it a little bit more like its friends. And then you could do this too with wrinkles. If you uh, were under the eye, for example, and you found some wrinkles you want to remove, this is a great way to kind of soften that. I'm going to do that here with this crease. You take as much time on these as you want to do it. Obviously, it is your art, and you decide when you're done. This is the reason why we did the healing first, because if we had done this first, uh, the healing uh, may or may not look as good once it heals. Those areas will still be brightened and darkened by this mask um, because the mask doesn't know what's going to be changing. So you'd end up with all these weird situations where the image was brighter, uh, but then you fix the issue and the brightness stayed. So you'd have to redo all the dodging and burning again. So just do them in order and life will be a lot easier on you. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So now let's go ahead and turn these on. Oh, if we turn off my black and white first, and I'm going to turn these on and off for you. This is our dodge before and after. And you see it's very subtle, but it adds that refinement level to the photo that we really need to accomplish a great skin retouch. If we want to look at the mask for that, we can do Alt M again. And this is what my mask turned out uh, for the brightening. Uh, so you can see that it is varied and it is all over the place. And you really could get in here and do a lot more with it. So that is dodging and burning for correction. And you note that we did label these layers and we can always turn the opacity down if we did a little bit too good of a job. And we wanna bring that realism back. The great thing about these techniques is that the skin is still her skin. We didn't replace it with another texture. We didn't uh, heal it with another layer. We simply brightened or darkened different areas of her skin so we'll get an amazing result. Plus we did it in raw, so we can use the actual exposure of the image to push and pull the shadows and highlights around a bit to kind of smooth it out. Now the next lesson we're going to be working on is going to be the more artistic dodge and burn, and that will be day three of this series. So go ahead and grab a photo, make sure you do your healing first, your any cloning if necessary, and then go ahead and do a dodge and burn on it. And uh, use the hashtag we're touching with Scott, and I'd love to see what you guys are working on. And I will catch you next time. Everybody stay safe.